So by now, I'm sure that many of you have heard news about the looming government shutdown. And uh, yes, at the time that I record this video, it does indeed appear that a government shutdown is imminent, assuming that nothing changes between now and the time when funding officially runs out, which is midnight tomorrow. In fact, the government is already bracing for disruptions and has notified federal workers that they'll soon be furloughed. And I do want to talk about what this means and who this is going to affect. But I first want to explain why the government is almost certainly going to be shut down in the first place. And the short answer is Republican stupidity. But the long answer requires a little bit more context. So let's go back to the beginning of the year when Kevin McCarthy finally became speaker on the 15th vote after he agreed to this condition. Quote, Mr. McCarthy agreed to allow a single lawmaker to force a snap vote at any time to oust the speaker, a rule that he had previously refused to accept regarding it as tantamount to signing the death warrant for his speakership in advance. And that instinct that he had was absolutely correct because that is now coming back to bite him in the ass. So he begrudgingly accepted that term to him becoming speaker because there was seemingly no other path to him being speaker unless he agreed to that. And uh, now he's in the situation where he's really just the speaker in name only because the people with the actual power are the unappeasable fascists like Matt Gates and Lauren Boebert, who he is forced to kowtow to. And uh, they're not happy with anything. In, in fact, they're making completely unreasonable demands that they know aren't going to pass. And they're kind of narrowing what he's allowed to do, which is next to nothing. They're not allowing him to negotiate with Democrats. They won't even support a temporary stopgap measure. In fact, one passed in the Senate by a two thirds majority, 77 senators supported it. And all that McCarthy has to do to avoid a shutdown is bring that bill that was passed in the Senate to the House and it's going to pass, which means the government would stay open. But the problem is that he can't do that because Matt Gates and a couple of other far right members of the House don't like it because it doesn't have enough cuts to social safety net programs. And they don't like that it includes funding for Ukraine. And what Matt Gates says goes. But remember, him and just a few others are holding McCarthy's life in their hands. So McCarthy really has no choice. And as Sawyer Hackett puts it, a bill to fund the government passed the Senate yesterday with two thirds support. It has two thirds support in the House, but Kevin McCarthy won't put it up for a vote because it risks his job. It's his shutdown. And that right there is the key thing to remember because McCarthy's options here are to keep the government open and lose his job or shut the government down and keep his job. And it seems as if he has opted for the latter option. Now, in response, he stated his intent to come up with his own stopgap funding bill with the expectation that the Senate is somehow going to agree to it, even though he's putting the demands from the fascists in there. And the Senate has already said, no, we're not going to support that, support what we wanted. And why would we support your bill when you wouldn't even support our bipartisan bill. But nonetheless, that's what McCarthy is saying should be the path forward. He doesn't believe it, but he's forced to pretend because this is what Matt Gates wants. In fact, Bernie Sanders responded to this saying six far right extremists who support massive tax breaks for the rich are trying to shut down the government. This is what they want. 14.7 billion cut to public schools in high poverty areas, 70% cut to nutrition assistance for children, 750 million cut to Head Start. Ain't going to happen. Yeah. So McCarthy is out of options, but he has to pretend as if there's still a path forward because, you know, he wants to instill confidence in GOP voters that this is somehow the Democrats' fault and not his fault because he is forced to kowtow to the extremists in his party who are asking for insane things. So, I mean, this is why the government is shutting down in a nutshell. It's because he has to do their bidding. But it's not just the government shutdown where they're in control and he's not. He's also being controlled by the extremists in his party in a number of other ways. For example, yesterday they held an impeachment inquiry into Joe Biden, not because there's evidence of any wrongdoing, but because Matt Gates said jump. Therefore, McCarthy was forced to ask, how high, sir? And during the sham Biden impeachment inquiry, Congressman Maxwell Frost concisely explained how whipped McCarthy is by Gates and others. And uh, what he said here was absolutely spot on. But then just 12 days later, 12 precious days later, something happens. I'm not sure what, uh, but something happens because then the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, comes out and says, yes, we will do an impeachment inquiry. So what happened between these 12 days? It's very simple. Three threats from members of his own caucus at the direction of former President Donald Trump 
changed his mind. Number one, the, for, uh, the threat to force um, a vote on impeachment, which would lose on the House floor and be another embarrassment in the long list of embarrassments this Congress for the Speaker of the House. Number two, the for, uh, they would uh, sh threat to shut down the government, something that will happen in just two days. And number three, and this is the one that really got to him, they said, you, you about to lose your job. And they said, we will remove you as Speaker from the House. And that scared him so much that Kevin McCarthy, the Speaker of the House of the United States of Representatives, third in the line of the presidency, completely caved due to the threats of people within his own caucus. Ding, ding, ding. That is exactly correct. Trump has called for a government shutdown, as Frost explained, in hopes that uh, maybe Matt Gates can either force the defunding of investigations into him, into some sort of a stopgap funding measure. But I mean, that's that's not going to happen because even if the government shuts down, those investigations will still be funded. But the Republican power structure currently is a sort of human centipede with Trump in front, Gates in the middle and McCarthy at the end, gobbling up Trump shit that was digested by Gates. And side note, Frost was on fire during this hearing and he basically blew up the entire GOP game, which led to a hilarious reaction by one of the witnesses. So let's watch. We have one witness who has a lot of questions, Ms. O'Connor. Dubinsky, uh, one witness who knows something about accounting but has no real involvement in what's going on. And Mr. Turley stopping here on his way to his next Fox News hit. This, this is not a serious inquiry. That was incredible and I had to include it. Uh, but this is not a serious inquiry. But this is what happens when the tail wags the dog. This is what happens when people like Kevin McCarthy let the animals run the zoo, right? You open the doors to extremists and then sooner or later, they're the ones with all the power and you're kind of left just doing their bidding. Otherwise, they can oust you like that. So it's a terrible predicament to be in if you're McCarthy. But the problem is that McCarthy is stuck and he can't do shit if he wants to remain speaker. But in his reign of terror as the de facto House Speaker, Matt Gates has decided to channel his inner Joffrey, which is a Game of Thrones reference for anyone who doesn't know. And he's basically now pouring salt in McCarthy's wounds. And I say this because there's reportedly been a really huge blow up between the two of them behind closed doors. And the allegations that Gates is making against McCarthy is wild. So Politico reports, the speaker and his most vocal GOP foe got into a heated exchange behind closed doors Thursday morning as Gates accused McCarthy of hiring a proxy to attack him online via conservative social media influencers. McCarthy's counsel had sent a cease and desist letter to the individual in question and the original post doesn't mention the Californian, but Gates continues to claim the speaker is involved. Quote, I asked him whether or not he was paying those influencers to post negative things about me online, Gates said Thursday, when asked about his clash with McCarthy during the private meeting. McCarthy responded, according to Gates, that he wouldn't waste his time or resources on that Floridian. Gates downplayed the confrontation, adding, my blood pressure is like 120 over 80, so I'm feeling great. Whatever, dude. Other House Republicans recall the Thursday they meeting differently, though, when Gates nodded to conspiratorial claims by suggesting that the speaker was fundraising for House Republicans via a bankrupt cryptocurrency exchange, one McCarthy ally got irritated enough to curse. Fuck off, Representative French Hill remarked loudly and with an eye roll in Gates' direction, according to a Republican in the room who spoke on the condition of anonymity. So to be clear, it's not just McCarthy who's being terrorized by the GOP's far-right fascists. It's all other Republicans who aren't part of that small group, right? They're irritated because their shenanigans are holding the entire party back and making them look like a clown show, which they are a clown show, but I mean, it makes them look even more unserious than they usually do. Not that they need that much help. But we've got to pause for a second because there was so much going on in that article and they don't do a good enough job of parsing out those details. So I'm going to give you the details. So this conspiracy that Matt Gates is referring to started on Twitter, where this influencer claims that they received a text from a McCarthy proxy, which reads, howdy, got <laughs> I love that it starts that way. Got an advocacy campaign with budget. Do you do paid posts? If so, how do you work? By the way, the issue is against Gates and government shutdown. Let me know ASAP. And then this person responded saying, I'm a strong supporter of what Gates is doing. The more the federal government we shut down, the happier we'll all be. Not so sure about that, bud. But Matt Gates saw this post. He then decided to boost it and he thanked the person for not taking up the offer and he called McCarthy pathetic. So that right there is what Gates 
Gates was referring to uh, when they had this reported blow up behind closed doors. And look, I don't know who's behind this. I don't know if McCarthy is tied to this or if it's just some random shit stirrer. It could be anyone, really. But what I do know is that McCarthy was scared shitless at the thought that Gates would think that this was him or that he was tied to this in any way, so much so that McCarthy literally sent a cease and desist to this person at the behest of Matt Gates, even though there's no evidence that this was a McCarthy proxy. The reason why Matt Gates thinks this is a McCarthy proxy is because the influencer who this offer was made to said that it was a McCarthy proxy, but they don't name anyone. They just say, hey, we want to attack Matt Gates. Do you want to get paid for attacking Matt Gates? And I mean, that could be anyone. It could be a Democratic organization. It could be a number of Republican organizations that hate Matt Gates. I mean, there's many of them. So that is why McCarthy is extra flustered. It's because these insane allegations are being lobbed against him by Matt Gates, and he's learning the hard way that you just cannot appease this person because this person is absolutely fucking insane. But on top of that, buried within this political article is some key insight about Matt Gates. Quote, immediately after the Thursday meeting, Gates brushed off questions on whether he was ready to force a vote to boot McCarthy from the speakership. The Floridian has warned that McCarthy is very likely to face an ejection vote if he works with Democrats to fund the government. Now, that is a key detail because if McCarthy isn't allowed to work with Democrats because Matt Gates says so, then the government cannot be funded because the Senate is controlled by Democrats, so you have no choice. When you have a divided Congress where one party controls the House and the other party controls the Senate, you have to work with the other party. And if you only include things that the far right flank of your party wants, you're just not gonna get that, right? So we're in this situation where a couple of far right dipshits are holding the entire government hostage and they're asking for things that they know aren't going to to pass, but regardless, McCarthy has to pretend as if they're making reasonable suggestions, and he has to go along with it. Because if he doesn't, then he loses his job. In addition to the demands, though, that Bernie talked about, there's so much more that they want, per the Washington Post. Other demands include cutting housing subsidies for the poor by 33% as soaring rents drive a national affordability crisis, forcing more than 1 million women and children onto the wait list of a nutritional assistance program for poor mothers and young children, reducing federal spending on home heating assistance for low-income families by more than 70% with energy prices high heading into the winter months. So in other words, if McCarthy isn't able to convince the entire Democratic Party to make poor people suffer, the government is going to shut down. And since Democrats aren't going to agree to all of these demands, the government is going to shut down since Matt Gates is prohibiting McCarthy from working with Democrats on anything. It's work with us or no work at all. And that's effectively no work at all. You're not going to make progress if you only work with the fascists in your party. But unfortunately, if inflicting pain and suffering on poor people is your position, then you can see how a shutdown is a win for you. Because here's what happens when the government shuts down. The Washington Post reports a government shutdown could have an immediate impact on WIC, a program that provides grocery assistance to 7 million pregnant people, mothers and children, including more than half of all newborns in the United States. Some recipients of the SNAP program for women, infants, and children may be turned away from stores as early as next week. Oh, but there's more. On Tuesday, the USDA announced it will give an estimated 3,000 more school districts in high-need areas the option to serve free breakfast and lunch to all students. But implementing these new guidelines could be stymied if the food and nutrition service staff that administers the National School Lunch Program is furloughed, which they would likely be if the government shut down. But on top of that, as PBS News reports, the paychecks of millions of federal workers will be delayed, businesses with federal contracts could see disruptions, people applying for passports and firearm permits could see delays, and so on and so forth. Basically, everything comes to a standstill when the government shuts down. But here's what won't be affected. The salaries of the members of Congress here. Yeah. Oh, and on top of that, we're still going to have to pay our student loan debt because next week, they're set to resume, and even if the government is shut down, those payments are still due, baby. Love the American system. It's great. So 
this is why these far-right Republicans want the government to shut down. Because if they can't get the deep spending cuts that they know that they won't get, then this is really the next best thing. This is how you inflict pain and suffering on poor people. And again, all of this could have been avoided if McCarthy defied just a small handful of cranks running the show. But doing so, as we've shown, would cost him his job. So that's how we got here. So at the time that I record this, a government shutdown is almost certain. But even if they somehow manage to avoid a shutdown, which I don't expect that, still, even if it can be avoided, this entire kerfuffle has been humiliating for Kevin McCarthy, to say the least. Because he looks like the biggest cuck in American politics. And that's because he is. Vagina. 